Good morning, MPC. Happy Monday. Nandito tayo sa Laging Handa Press Briefing. Today, we have uh, Cabinet Secretary Carlo Nograles with Assistant Secretary Vergere and uh, Assistant Secretary Menez. Good morning, sir. Secretary Nograles. Thank you, Yusek Rocky. To the members of the Malacanang Press Corps, friends from the media, and our foreign correspondents at sa lahat po ng ating mga kababayan who have tuned in for this briefing. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Salamat din po kay uh, DFA ASEC Ed Menyes at um, Department of Health ASEC Rosette Verhere. Nakasama natin ngayon upang magbigay linaw sa mga hakbang ng gobyerno upang maiwasan ang pagkalat ng COVID-19 virus. Today, we would like to focus on three areas with regard to government action in response to COVID-19. First is public health and safety. Second is the efforts undertaken to take care of our kababayan overseas. And third is our continued efforts to assess and minimize the impact of COVID-19 on our economy. First, we wish to assure the public that the Department of Health remains on top of a government-wide effort to monitor, identify, and contain potential COVID-19 cases. As of 9.30 a.m. of today, February 24, 132 patients under investigation are currently admitted in our hospitals with 474 PUIs having been discharged after tests revealed that they are negative for COVID-19. As of today, let me stress that two of the three initial confirmed cases have already recovered from the disease with one fatality. So if you take a look at it, there are really no confirmed cases as of today in our country because two have already recovered. With everyone's cooperation, we hope to maintain our continued success in preventing local transmission of COVID-19 efforts to identify, track down, and properly screen all possible COVID-19 carriers continue, and we assure the public that we have more than enough testing kits on hand to test potential PUIs in the weeks to come. Be that as it may, the Department of Science and Technology is working with a medical center overseas that has agreed to collaborate with our Research Institute for Tropical Medicine, or RITM, in the development and possible use of a diagnostic test for detecting antibodies to COVID-19 virus. While purely for research purposes only, this testing procedure will enable us to more accurately determine past infections as well as new or recent infections to COVID-19 from our collected samples from PUIs. Also, as mentioned last February 14, the Gen Amplify TM Rapid Test Diagnostic Kit being developed by Manila Health Tech Incorporated is completing all requirements for WHO validation. Preliminary documents have also been submitted to FDA while a technology presentation to the advisory group on COVID-19 headed by DOH was conducted last February 21. As to the efficacy of virgin coconut oil in combating COVID-19, a leading proponent, an academician in one of our top universities is actually spearheading this initiative and the National University of Singapore has accepted to test VCO against COVID-19. We are now preparing sending samples of virgin coconut oil for testing within the week. Now, critical to preventing local transmission of COVID-19 is the activation of Barangay Health Emergency Rescue Teams or BERTs in all barangays in the country. We joined the Department of Interior and Local Government in directing local government units and chief executives to organize and deploy BERTs in all localities. This strategy was found to be effective during the SARS outbreak, so we have adopted the same mechanism to combat COVID-19. BERT units will play a key role in helping cities and municipalities monitor, report, and isolate potential COVID-19 cases in our communities. While government marshals resources to combat 
the threat posed by COVID-19, we would like to reiterate the need for everyone to take the necessary precautions to avoid spreading the virus. Gawin natin ang kailangan gawin para di tayo mahawa at di tayo makakahawa ng iba. Kung kayo po ay may sakit, may ubo, sipon at masakit ang katawan, magpatingin agad sa doktor para sigurado. In this light, we thank the Civil Service Commission for clarifying through Memorandum Circular No. 5 Series of 2020 issued last February 20 that the absence of public sector officials and employees during the 14 calendar days prescribed for self-quarantine, including those who were diagnosed with COVID-19 during the said period, shall not be deducted from earned leave credits. We appeal to the private sector to consider extending the same benefit to their employees. Now, as to our kababayans overseas exposed to the COVID-19 threat and OFWs who want to come home from areas covered by travel restrictions, please be assured that your government is prepared to facilitate your repatriation consistent with current quarantine policies. In the case of the Filipino crew and passengers aboard the MV Diamond Princess, an estimated 400 plus of our kababayans will be repatriated as soon as they comply with the established quarantine protocols of Japan. Our previous schedule for repatriation has been moved and adjusted out of an abundance of caution to further safeguard the healthy the health and safety of our kababayans. The Japanese government has ensured that any affected Filipino is provided proper medical treatment and care in their hospitals and health facilities. And our government is working closely with Japanese health and foreign ministry officials to complete the quarantine protocols and repatriate our Filipino crew members and passengers as soon as possible. Just the same, we have tightened up our repatriation protocols to ensure that at every juncture of the trip, from pre-boarding to their onboard journey to disembarkation up to their 14-day quarantine in Athletes Village in New Clark City, they will undergo constant health screening and infection prevention. Aside from our kababayans in Japan, DFA and the Department of Labor and Employment are ironing out the details of the repatriation plan for Filipinos in Macau. At this point, let me highlight that last Saturday, February 22, all of the repatriates from Wuhan previously quarantined at the Athletes Village received a clean bill of health and were released as none of them showed any symptoms of COVID-19 and all tested negative for the virus before they were released. Among them, the Overseas Workers' Welfare Association, or OWA, has given cash assistance and offered livelihood assistance to active and inactive members, while also offering facilitation for employment through the Department of Labor and Employment and the Philippine Overseas Employment Administration, as well as endorsement to TESDA for skills training or enhancement. Over and above that, OWA has so far provided financial assistance to around 8,084 stranded OFWs in the Philippines due to the travel ban. As far as the economy is concerned, our economic managers expect minimal impact from the COVID-19 outbreak in the agricultural sector, particularly on exports. Our banana exports to China, for example, are not slowing down. While there were previous logistical issues during the Chinese Lunar New Year break, this was only a temporary setback and our banana exports to China have returned to normal. We also expect the outbreak to have a minimal effect or impact on OFW remittances. In terms of remittances, keep in mind that mainland China account for only 0.1% of total OFW remittances, while Macau and Hong Kong account for 0.4% and 2.7% respectively. In estimating the impact of COVID-19 on OFW cash remittances, the Department of Labor and Employment inputted the following assumption. First, Full year 2020 growth rate assumption 
of overseas Filipino cash remittances of 3%. Number two, full year 2020 cash remittances from China, including its special administrative regions at 6.1%. And number three, decline in the growth rate of cash remittances during the severe acute respiratory syndrome or SARS episode. So based on these assumptions, we expect that the COVID-19 outbreak could dampen our total cash remittance growth in 2020 by 0 0.8 percentage points from 3.0% to 2.2%. In other words, while remittances from overseas Filipinos reached a record high of 33.5 billion US dollars last 2019, we were actually expecting this to increase to 34.5 billion US dollars in remittances this year with a projected growth of 3%. But because of this COVID-19 epidemic, we have adjusted our growth pro projections to 2.2%. And now expect 34.2 billion US dollars in remittances for 2020. Nevertheless, this shall still breach another record high in overseas Filipino remittances. Dole, Dole also assures us that remittances from other source countries, such as the US, UAE, and Saudi Arabia, may help compensate for the possible slowdown in remittances coming from China, Macau, and Hong Kong. And we are encouraged by historical data that shows that Philippine remittances have been resilient even in the face of global downtrends. Ladies and gentlemen, let me say once again that while COVID-19 remains a cause for concern, we believe that together we will be able to contain the virus with the resources at hand, the concerted effort of government, and the cooperation of every citizen. Maraming salamat po. Salamat, Secretary. Assistant Secretary Berhere. Good morning, uh, everybody. Uh, I'd just like to give DOH updates on the MV Diamond Princess repatriation. The Department of Health disclosed today that its repatriation and quarantine plan approved by the Interagency Task Force on Emerging Infectious Diseases for the overseas Filipinos aboard the MV Diamond Princess cruise ship. To date, 59 out of the 538 overseas Filipinos from the cruise ship had been confirmed with COVID-19. Two out of the confirmed cases have recovered since isolation and admission. Around 400 plus overseas Filipinos have signified interest in being repatriated. The repatriation of our Kababayans is of utmost priority to the President Rodrigo Rua Duterte and this government. We are determined to ensure that our countrymen will come back safe and healthy. The OH has implemented mechanisms to ensure a seamless repatriation process for our fellow Filipinos, our Secretary said. Under the repatriation plan, DOH will screen and only allow the repatriation of overseas Filipinos who are negative for COVID-19. Overseas Filipinos negative for the coronavirus will be checked for signs and symptoms of respiratory illness and only asymptomatic individuals will be allowed to disembark from the ship, take the bus to the airport, and board the aircraft back to the Philippines. While aboard the aircraft from Japan to Clark International Airport, regular monitoring will be done and individuals who will manifest signs and symptoms of respiratory illness will be separated and isolated in one area of the aircraft. Upon landing and disembarkation, another screening will be conducted. Those who will manifest signs of respiratory illness during the flight will be immediately brought to an identified hospital for isolation and management, while those who were asymptomatic through the flight will be directly transferred to the quarantine facility at the new Clark City. During the 14-day quarantine procedure, 20 medical teams from DOH hospitals will man the quarantine facility to provide appropriate health services. Patients will be checked twice a day and provided with food and other basic provisions. We will ensure that infection control and quarantine protocols will be strictly followed by our kababayans and the health workers that will man the quarantine facility. 
DOH and its partners will be working doubly hard to ensure the safety and welfare of the quarantined patients as well as civilians in the vicinity, our Health Secretary concluded. Okay. Assistant Secretary Menez. Yes. Uh, magandang araw po sa inyong lahat. Uh, on behalf of the Department of Foreign Affairs, uh, I will be presenting updates on the um, efforts of the Department of Foreign Affairs with regard to uh, the COVID-19 uh, issue, um, basically based from last week's presentation. Kagaya ni sinabi ni Kabsek Nugrales, uh, the 49 um, people who were at the Athletes' Village uh, were graduated last Saturday, um, and uh, fortunately, none of them uh, were, 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 were infected during the 14-day quarantine period, and therefore, all of them are now uh, able to return to their families, um, and we hope that uh, they will remain healthy uh, after this 14-day uh, period. With respect to the DFA efforts uh, for the Filipinos aboard the Diamond Princess cruise ship, um, I will be presenting a timeline of what the DFA uh, has been doing since the very beginning. Um, as all of you know, uh, on the 4th of February, um, there were passengers diagnosed with COVID-19 uh, and subsequently, in the next few days, uh, it was uh, revealed that one Filipino uh, crew member uh, was among the first 10 confirmed positive cases. From the very beginning, the, depart the embassy in uh, Tokyo has been closely coordinating with the Japanese authorities and uh, has communicated with the Filipinos on board to provide all of the 538 um, kababayan with all possible assistance. Hotline phone numbers and email uh, contacts were provided to the Filipinos on board so that they could uh, immediately and constantly communicate with the embassy for all their concerns and requests. And uh, assistance in the form of uh, food, medicine, masks, and other supplies were also provided by the Philippine Embassy to our uh, Kababayan on board. As you can see from the timeline, um, the numbers of Filipinos who have been uh, uh, in considered positive for COVID have been constantly changing. Uh, as more and more tests uh, results come out, uh, it is clear that uh, all of the affected Filipinos by this period, 7 February to 13 February, all of them were crew members. And the embassy continued to monitor and uh, report to the Philippines about the conditions of um, the affected Filipinos. The embassy also uh, started to visit the hospitals to speak to the doctors and social workers assigned to the Filipino patients in order to ensure that the needs of our Filipinos uh, are being taken care of. And also, uh, again, the Philippine Embassy continued to coordinate with Japanese government authorities um, with regard to the needs of the Filipinos. Succeeding days, again, revealed the numbers of Filipinos continue to increase. And uh, the Japanese government was also trying to respond to this uh, growing number. Uh, as you know, outside of China, the largest number of uh, COVID positive uh, people uh, were on this particular ship docked in Yokohama. 
last week, more cases of Filipino crew members were uh, discovered to, or the tests revealed that uh, they were COVID positive. But at the same time, the first Filipino who was uh, diagnosed as COVID positive had also recovered and in fact uh, was released from the, um, the hospital. The numbers continue to grow and over the weekend, uh, we now learn, and as uh, confirmed by uh, Asik Verjere, that the total number of Filipinos uh, in, affected by COVID-19 is already 59, uh, including the two who have already been discharged from the hospital. Uh, and this number actually, uh, I believe, also still includes five more who are expected to be released uh, from the hospitals within the week. We have, uh, over the weekend, as you just heard, that uh, we were hoping to send them home earlier. However, the results of all the tests of the crew members uh, were not yet uh, ready. And therefore, as was mentioned, out of an abundance, overabundance of caution, it was decided to move the date of uh, repatriation to early this week. The seven Filipino passengers out of the 538 Filipinos uh, one of them has had to undergo quarantine uh, because apparently that person has, uh, was identified as being a close contact of one of the uh, infected uh, 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 persons on board. Um, as I mentioned, all the f crew members have been given the test and we are just awaiting the results of that test. Um, the question, as to the question as to will there be Filipino crew members left on board, uh, Princess Cruises has indicated that they may need to ha uh, have some Filipinos crew members uh, remain on board uh, and uh, ask essential crew to keep the ship uh, ship shape. So uh, we are still awaiting the final numbers uh, of the total uh, number of Filipinos who will be returning to Manila, hopefully by tomorrow. Again, just to repeat, uh, the Philippine Embassy and the Philippine government, along with the Department of uh, Health, whose uh, nine-member team uh, arrived in Tokyo over the weekend, have been closely coordinating with the Japanese government authorities and the Filipinos on board MV Diamond Princess to ensure that all of their needs uh, and concerns are being taken care of. And all the details, logistics for the return of the Filipinos have already been considered. Uh, the IATF uh, already issued last Friday the Division of Labor with regard to the arrival scenarios for the, the, the team, uh, for the group as was explained by Asik Verhere, and uh, our embassy and the DOH uh, uh, will be providing nine doctors and two embassy personnel to accompany the uh, group when they return to the Philippines. Uh, part of the uh, preparations for the return, uh, and I think was explained by Asik Verhere, is of course the provision of the necessary personal protective equipment to uh, those who will be accompanying the group as well as those who might be, uh, well, uh, feeling some symptoms of uh, illness uh, on board uh, the airplanes. I believe, oops. Uh, some, some slides on 
the reasons why we need to repatriate. Uh, as all of you are aware, other countries began repatriating their passengers uh, even without the termination of the 14-day quarantine period on board. Um, and uh, since February 19, which was the end of the 14-day period, uh, more countries have been uh, trying to repatriate their uh, countrymen uh, as quick as possible. Um, there are other nationalities who are part of the crew. Uh, over half of the over 1,000 uh, crew members were Filipinos, but there were also Indonesians and Indians. And therefore, those countries are also looking to repatriate their crew members uh, within the next few days. As was explained earlier, we did want to, to send them home on Sunday, but due to the lack of uh, the full results, uh, it was decided to postpone the uh, repatriation. And the same is true for the Indonesian and Indian crew members. This is the latest information that we have on the movement. Uh, as you know, the situation is very fluid, both as to the numbers of those uh, who may be considered COVID positive and those who may eventually return to the Philippines. Uh, and even as to the timing, uh, these things are still, at this, as of this very moment, still being worked out uh, in Tokyo. So uh, thank you again. Marami salamat po. Okay, thank you, Asak Menyes. Uh, questions, MPC? Um, Henry, Raymond, Mela, and Pia Denjinki. Secretary Carlo, yung uh, uh, medyo uh, lilipat lang ako ng uh, bansa. Korea, uh, mm -hmm. South Korea. Ma masyadong mabilis yung pagdami ng uh, COVID-19 sa Korea. 763, kundi ako nagkakamali yung pinakahuling report uh, ng uh, CNBC. Ano, ho? ano ang plano ng uh, gobyerno sa ating mga kababayan doon? At may plano ba ta tayo rin na magkaroon ng uh, travel ban for South Korea? Vice versa. Mm, sa ngayon, uh, wala pang desisyon. No? Um, Pag-uusapan ito sa task force. Isa ito sa mga topics na pag-uusapan. Um, I-assess natin yung situation. At uh, based on existing protocols natin, uh, pati recommendation from the WHO, yun po yung magiging basis natin for making a decision, if ever. No? Uh, but uh, ayokong pangunahan kung ano yung magiging uh, decision ng task force. Uh, but uh, rest assured na kasama ito sa mga pag-uusapan namin, kasama ito sa i-assess namin. Um, and uh, titingnan namin lahat ng existing protocols at recommendations. And then ultimately, pag uh, nakapag-decision po ang uh, task force, ay ibabalita namin agad. Uh, I hope wala pa naman, pero just in case, meron na hubang Pinoy na nadamay o kababayan natin sa Korea na naapektuhan itong COVID-19, uh, Secretary? So far, based sa ating mga kasamahan mula sa DFA, pati sa DOH, ay wala pa naman. But again, uh, the DFA and the DOH and DOLE um, ay nakikipag-ugnayan sa ating mga counterparts dun sa South Korea para continuously ma-monitor natin yung situation doon. So, ligtas pa yung mga kababayan nating Pinoy sa Korea sa ngayon? Mm, so far, ligtas pa naman. And uh, I think uh, the South Korean government is also doing uh, everything that they can to contain the epidemic no, uh, and control the situation. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, uh, idadagdag ko lang yun. Yung uh, embassy natin sa Seoul, naglabas na ng advisory, sa mga Filipino communities natin sa South Korea uh, with uh, some advice na, well, number one, of course, uh, sundin yung mga uh, patakaran ng Korean government with regard to how uh, they should behave uh, during this uh, heightened alert uh, that was issued. And uh, meron din silang uh, sinabi na as far as movements of the Filipinos, uh, kagaya ng mga advice sa mga ibang Filipino communities in other parts of the world, ay uh, yun lahat ng non-essential travel, kung pwede hong ilimita na lang ho, at uh, wag din hong 
siguro dumalaw sa mga malalaking uh, public gatherings. Uh, and of course, to maintain the health uh, uh, procedures, kaya washing of hands and use of uh, uh, masks kung kailangan ho. So, insofar as the Filipino community in uh, South Korea is concerned, meron na silang mga advisory from the Philippine Embassy at patuloy din naman yung pag-monitor ng condition. All right, thank you. Raymond Tinasa, then Mela, Pia, and Jinky. Okay, Asikit. So, nabanggit nyo kanina na parang gusto ng MV Princess Diamond na may matira na Filipino crew. At papalig naman tayo. Actually, uh, even, um, even before na in-announce yung essential crew, uh, I believe, I think over 100 of our uh, crew members, uh, nagsabi na rin sila na uh, they were willing to stay behind uh, should it be required by the employer. Uh, pero as the situation developed, uh, mukang ang uh, Diamond Cruises mismo ang nagsabi na titignan namin kung sino lang ang kailangan na crew members na essential para uh, patuloy ang pagtakbo ng ship maintenance siguro. Pero lahat ng hindi essential, uh, kailangan ng umuwi. So, yun nga yung numero na yun, hindi pa ho natin matukoy kung ano na yung final numbers. Kasi, uh, natanong ngayon kasi maraming mga international experts yung parang tumutulig sa doon sa pag-handle doon sa MB Princess style. Wala nga daw green zone o parang established safe zone na walang virus. So parang nandun lang sa loob yung so pasible na kahit negative ngayon, bukas makalawa, eh matatamaan din yung kababayan natin. Well, uh, perhaps yung mga health issues, <laughs> ASIC, Verheri can answer that. Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, actually, uh, this has been uh, out uh, yesterday when the Minister of Health uh, from Japan uh, was trying to apologize for some gaps in their measures because uh, there were this number of passengers who were allowed to disembark without being tested. And it turned out that one of them turned out positive after being tested when she got home already. Uh, as to the circumstances within the ship, also in that uh, issue once uh, or article that came out yesterday, they have said that uh, some of these crew members were allowed to do their sir the functions uh, like uh, serving food, uh, going and uh, bringing uh, bringing these different provisions for the passenger. So the assumption now would be that all of them were exposed. That's why we're treating this as a uh, very, very critical matter. That's why when we they get here, even though they have finished already their 14-day quarantine in the aboard the ship in Japan, we are going to have the 14-day quarantine period also here in the Philippines. Thank you, Paul. Okay, Mela, microphone, please. Hi. Hello, hello. For Secretary Nograles po, uh, Sir House Deputy Speaker uh, Johnny Pimentel says that the Philippines is expected to lose about 1.2 million Chinese visitors due to the coronavirus outbreak. How are we preparing for this, sir? Well, uh, number one, ina-assess natin yung numbers, no? Um, as the situation progresses, no? every month, tinitingnan natin yung numero. So, yung 1.2 million na yan, uh, highly disputable yan kasi hindi naman natin alam kung gaano katagal ang magiging effect no, ng COVID-19 at ng travel ban. No? Um, so, hindi pa natin totally masasabi na abot tayo dyan. Just the same, um, if we assume for the worst, we'll have to make certain adjustments no like so san tayo kukuha ng additional international tourists that is what the department of tourism is working on uh, na hindi tayo maging dependent uh, mula sa mga chinese tourists we have to market the philippines as a tourist destination elsewhere no so we're looking at uh, the western side of the globe at uh, doon magkakaroon ng mga um, tourism uh, promotions na gagawin ng department of tourism para hikayatin ang mga, mga international tourists from that side of the, of the world. No? 
Uh, then again, also yung domestic tourism is something na totally pinupush talaga ng Department of Tourism because this is one way for us to negate whatever uh, potential losses we'll have in terms of international tourist arrivals because of the COVID-19. But uh, again, ina assess natin uh, daily and monthly, tinitingnan din natin, and then we make assumptions and projections as tinitingnan natin kung saan tayo pwedeng bumawi para hindi ganun kalaki ang maging negative impact in terms of tourism. But because we have a strong domestic market, uh, kaya natin pinupush yung domestic tourism. Because with the dom minsan nakakalimutan ng ating mga kababayan, malaki din ang na, na ipapasok na um, economic activity ang domestic tourism. Not only it's a national, ano, um, na on the national sphere, but also in terms of even regional, um, regional spheres. Malaki din yung potential at effect ng domestic tourism. Opo, uh, sir, just a follow-up. Speaking of domestic tourism, we understand that President Duterte would actively, actively promote domestic tourism by going to leading tourism destinations in the Philippines like Boracay. Sir, do we have, uh, do we already have activities lined up for the president? Um, right now, nasa planning uh, stage pa lang tayo, planning and coordination stage. Um, so, wala pa tayong final details, but um, we want to maximize kasi yung pag-visit ni Pangulo na hindi lamang siya purely for tourism purposes, uh, but also kung ano pang mga activities na pwede natin maipasok sa kanyang pagbisita dun sa ibang like Cebu or Boracay. If there are other activities that we can have lined up also, uh, more than just uh, tourism um, activities, kung may mga turnovers na pwedeng gawin, kung may mga visitations na pwede siyang gawin para ma-maximize lang namin yung stay ni Pangulo. So all of that is being um, coordinated pa lang uh, with the different uh, government agencies. Pia? Okay, Asik, very hairy po. There's a, um, there are reports po that um, a Chinese medical expert has warned that even uh, yung mga dating coronavirus patients who have recovered may still be uh, may still be able to transmit the disease. Um, how is DOH assessing this information po and how is this affecting our protocols in the Philippines? Yes, uh, actually all the information that has been uh, going around and being uh, published in different countries, especially with their experiences from their, their patients, are all being studied. Now, this is, was one of those uh, articles that uh, was published, I think, last week, where they are saying that uh, there is this recurrence and all of these things. Lahat po ng mga nababasa natin at naririnig ngayon sa mga bawat artikulo uh, in different countries, from different countries' experiences, are all being studied and validated. Uh, the WHO and the Center for Disease Control of the United States issues out uh, accurate and uh, uh, well uh, evidenced or well studied information. So ngayon, for now, the DOH, our government, uh, gets our recommendations and guidance from World Health Organization. But if and when this happens, uh, we are, of course, uh, we should be prepared aside from the other factors that are uh, of utmost importance when it comes to this disease. But uh, for this recurrence and all, I don't think there are much uh, evidence yet to support uh, this uh, claim uh, of the Chinese people who have published this last week. Okay, ASIC menus for kay Kabsek. Um, what about yung situation po sa Singapore and in Italy, kung saan mataas din yung number ng coronavirus patients? How are we monitoring the situation po? Well, right now, our foreign and health um, officials are coordinating with the respective foreign ministers also and health ministers dun sa iba't ibang bansa kasama na yung Singapore, kasama yung Italy so meron pang, nandun pa naman yung close coordination ng ating government uh, Philippine government pati yung Singapore government On behalf of the department uh, lahat nga ng mga reports uh, of uh, local transmissions, spikes in infections, are being closely monitored um, by the embassies uh, closest to the areas. So uh, 
one of the most important functions of our post is really to determine kung may Pilipino na apektado uh, or na report na uh, COVID positive or PUI, PUM. So we hope that uh, with the transparent sharing of information by the governments involved, we will be able to um, provide accurate information to our health authorities here in the Philippines for advice as to how to respond to the needs of our Filipinos abroad. But in most cases, um, we really are dependent on the health systems of those countries in order to provide the first line of uh, assistance. Uh, ang mga embassy ho natin ay nagmamonitor dahil hindi naman, wala naman ho kami mga doktor na pwedeng mag-practice uh, in those jurisdictions. But since it is a uh, public health uh, concern, emerging international concern, then we are uh, confident that the WHO and all the uh, health authorities across the world are working together, uh, sharing information in order to provide the best uh, response um, to all people who are affected by this particular COVID-19. Uh, Kabsek, you mentioned that you, uh, the interagency task force, will be taking into consideration the recommendation of the of the WHO. But aside from that, sir, what will uh, it take for the Philippine government na, uh, to issue travel bans to other countries? Like, for example, sir, Singapore has reported a confirmed Filipino case of the COVID-19. Kasama po ba yon, sir, sa mga tinitingnan niyo? Um, sure, tinitingnan natin yung exposure risk, no? Um, ng ating mga kababayan who are currently working dun sa South Korea. And then, of course, ang exposure risk din natin dito sa bansa uh, pag meron pong mga mula sa South Korea na pupunta dito. That's number one. Number two, titingnan natin yung mga health protocols na ginagawa ng South Korea. Kung magbibigay po ng assurance yung gobyerno ng South Korea that ginag ginagawa naman nila no? strictly yung mga health protocols to ensure na walang mga pasahero or turista mula sa South Korea ang makarating dito sa bansang Pilipinas na maaring may dalang sakit ng COVID-19. Isa yan, isa rin yan sa mga tinitingnan natin. Um, so so basically, it's really uh, an assurance from the South Korean government uh, based on our health protocols and their health protocols. If, if makita naman natin na maganda naman yung sistema at uh, malaki yung assurance, na hindi magkahawaan, um, then that we will still have that comfort level. Um, but if uh, the comfort level is broken or um, we feel that uh, there is a potential danger no, to public health uh, dito sa ating bansa, then uh, we'll have to make a decision. Thank you, sir. Okay. Jinky, then Joyce and Trisha, and then Alvin. Microphone, please. Good morning po sa DOH, ma'am. Ma'am, there are cases ng mga medical doctors in Wuhan um, that uh, who actually perished because of uh, COVID-19. Uh, COVID sa atin po, ano yung mga safety protocols na sinusundan ng mga medical personnel natin na siyang in charge doon sa mga COVID-19 uh, patients? Uh. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we have these standard guidelines for infection control. Uh, these are procedures where all hospitals uh, implement, and they also use this as part of the licensing and uh, accreditation standards for all hospitals. So, pagkaganun po, we have our protocols for our medical personnel when they are taking care of COVID-19 patients. Just like those personnel who have taken care of uh, those positive cases that we've had before. Uh, we had three positive cases and they were confined in our hospital. So these uh, medical personnel were uh, given no, and they were uh, required to wear these ha hazmat suits where they are covered from head to toe. Also, they were uh, required also to do quarantine right after their duties no, in uh, taking care of 
taking care of these patients. So these uh, procedures are all standardized and it is being implemented by all of our medical personnel in all of our facilities. So if and when we will have another positive case or all of these patients under investigation that are admitted in our hospitals, we still implement this kind of infection control procedures for our medical personnel. One thing, ma'am. Um, ang mayor ng Kapas, parang they ask the DOH na um, parang maghanap ng other quarantine place para daw doon sa mga 400 plus na affected ng um, COVID sa cruise ship. Meron ba tayong ibang quarantine place, ma'am, na uh, po pwede nating ma-adalhan ma sa mga pasyente ito if in case? Yes, ma'am. Uh, actually, we have identified uh, other options. Uh, and we are trying to prepare these other facilities. But uh, with that request coming from our local government official, uh, we deemed it wise not to uh, accede to that request because it is not really rational at this point. Because we are going to bring home uh, persons or our kababayans coming from a ship which is highly infected. So distributing our kababayans into different sites or different facilities would increase the risk of us for further possible transmission of the disease. That's why we uh, deemed it best and decided, and the interagency task force has decided, that we just bring to one facility for this special circumstance. So, meaning hindi natin mapabibigyan si Mayor ng Kapas, ma'am? For the moment, doon muna tayo. Sa, sa ngayon po. We are treating this as highly uh, critical, and uh, we would want that uh, all measures to prevent uh, infection or transmission will be uh, implemented. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Okay, mag-last three na ba tayo? Joyce, Trisha, Arian, and Alvin, and Mr. Wang. Sa DOH po, over the weekend, there were reports from international media suggesting that the incubation period for, of the virus could be longer than 14 days. Kasi sa UB province po, there was a 70-year-old man who was infected with the virus but did not show symptoms until 27 days later. So how this, how is this case going to affect the protocols that we are implementing? Kasi as you've mentioned earlier, 14 days quarantine pa rin na sinusunod natin. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we've received this information. Uh, uh, da daily, there would be accounts of the different uh, experiences coming from uh, patients or uh, from other countries. And uh, meron po tayong uh, ginagamit na batayan. No? Because uh, in this uh, situation right now, there has been a lot of accounts where uh, their incubation period was 9 days, incubation period of 19 days. And uh, there was this study that we have... Uh, that, that was issued where they have studied uh, the different incubation periods of several patients and this was published. And uh, based from that, it still states that the, the 0 to 14 days is still valid as of this time. Also, we get our guide and direction or recommendations coming from World Health Organization where and the Center for Disease Control of the United States still at this point uh, have their working incubation period at 0 to 14 days. So uh, we are also uh, making sure that if and when we will be revising our guidelines because of all of these uh, experiences from the ground, like a longer incubation period and all, that we are prepared. We're trying to prepare for that also. But for the meantime, what we advise our patients or our persons under monitoring especially those being discharged from hospitals, that we still would monitor them one month, no? Na magpo-follow up. Like for those uh, repatriates coming from uh, New Clark City, those Wuhan repa repatriates, they were advised that our regional offices through our local governments would be still monitoring them for one month, follow up and also anybody who exhibits signs and symptoms can uh, uh, can always call the hotline and also we have their numbers, we will be texting or calling them for follow up. So since you've mentioned man, one, one month after the 14 days quarantine, so so far ma'am, yung mga cases natin na declared asymptomatic pa rin or wala talaga silang symptoms at all, wala naman nagpapakitang symptoms after 27 days or after? Yes ma'am, wala pang reports na ganun. Thank you, Pop. Trisha. Hi, good morning, Asik Verheri. I'm just to follow up to Joyce's question. Um, because yung mga darating po nating are repatriates from uh, Diamond Princess may possibly have um, 
different interactions with those infected with um, COVID-19. So, kung, di, kung iba-iba yung span ng interaction nila with the people infected, will are you considering um, extending the number of days for quarantine? Since yun nga po, iba-iba yung ano, incubation, possible incubation period ng mga tao dun sa ship. Yes, ma'am. Actually, uh, this is quite. This is evolving. That's how we always say it. Hindi po. Uh, we are not uh, saying that uh, for now it's really 14 days. We are going to be assessing them every day regularly so that we will know on how we can deal with the situation. But let me just tell you that we have to consider the fact that all of these people have already finished their 14-day quarantine on board the ship. Now, when they get home, that's why it was a uh, part of the decision of the interagency task force to have another 14-day quarantine period here in the Philippines because of that consideration where we have assumed that the exposure of these individuals are sliding and not at the same day or at the same time. So, uh, again, I let me reiterate all of these uh, plans and all of these uh, uh, interventions are evolving once we see and assess that uh, we would need to extend our quarantine period and then we may be doing that uh, because of uh, these factors. Thank you. To Secretary Nagrales or to um, ASEC Menyes, he mentioned earlier that um, Filipinos or OFWs in affected countries uh, can uh, ask for repatriation or can be sent back to the Philippines. Do we have um, specific protocols dun sa mga gustong umuwi, but in areas that we do not have um, plans yet to do batch repatriation? Um, bukas naman ng ating mga embahada. So kung meron tayong mga kababayan uh, from abroad um, no, who are under threat ng COVID-19, then they can immediately contact our embassies. No, they're, they're the nearest embassies within the country that uh, they are working in no, or they, they are uh, currently residing in. Um, kaya nga nalaman natin yung tungkol sa mga Pilipino mula sa Macau na gusto mag-repatriate kasi nag-reach out nga sila sa ating mga uh, foreign uh, department officials. So, yun. Uh, if there is anybody from any country who, who wish uh, to be um, assisted by the Philippine government, ang sinasabi lang namin, we're ready and willing to assist them. And the government, sir, will shoulder the expenses for repatriation, of course. Depende. Like, for instance, dito sa, mula sa Diamond Princess, no? uh, may, shared, um, may shared cost yun. Um, some, most, most will be shouldered by Magsaysay, no? Yes. Yeah, and then the other costs na hindi mas shoulder magsaysay, gobyerno ang bahala. So it really depends on the situation. Uh, what we're saying is that we have the funds naman, uh, we're ready uh, to um, deploy the funds if necessary, if we need to repatriate, whether by batch or individually, um, government's ready to respond. Okay, last three, Alvin, Mr. Wang, and then Arian. Asak may niyas, magandang, magandang tanghali po. Asik may report yung Minister of Health ng UAE. Uh, naka, Nakapag-record sila ng two cases ng COVID-19. And isa doon sa dalawa, uh, Pilipino. Anong assistance ang binibigay natin ngayon doon sa, ano, sa Pinoy na tested positive for uh, COVID-19? Uh, kagaya na sinabi mo, dalawa na ho ang Pilipino natin sa United Arab Emirates na na-test positive for COVID-19. And Kagaya ng ginagawa ng uh, embassy natin in Tokyo, uh, in uh, Hong Kong, in, in our posts in China, uh, they, uh, once they confirm yung nationality ng affected person, uh, agad-agad nilang kinokontak yung government uh, authorities, including the health authorities and the hospital where that person may be confined, to ascertain uh, the condition of our uh, kababayan. Uh, kung pwede ho siyang kausapin by phone or by email, uh, ini-establish ho yung communication lines para, as I said, lahat ng mga pangangailangan nila ay uh, pwedeng mapagbigyan or matulungan ng embassy. Um, in the UAE in particular, from what I understand, yung unang na-identify, mukhang stable naman yung condition niya. Yung pangalawang na-identify, uh, mukhang nilipat siya sa ibang uh, 
health facility uh, to provide better monitoring and evaluation because as far as we are aware, uh, parang hindi ho yata nag improve yung condition non. So the embassy is closely monitoring um, their health uh, conditions and needs. Okay. You say isa lang kay ASIC uh, Maria. Uh, ASIC uh, Maria, uh, gano'n po ba katagal yung recovery period ng tinamaan ng uh, COVID-19? Mukhang madali lang naman siyang makarecover. Hindi po pare-pareho, sir. It's not the same. We had a patient, uh, the very first uh, COVID-19 patient here in the Philippines, who stayed in the hospital for, I think, two weeks or more because her test results uh, will not turn negative. Because uh, one of the criteria for us to discharge a patient and send them home are two negative results 48 hours apart. But some patients uh, for COVID-19, uh, after one day, they are all already well. And when they get tested, uh, they are already negative. So it's different for each individual. So there is really no definite uh, number of days now that you can say that you get this disease and uh, that it's going to resolve in this number of days. I can tell you about the experiences of our, uh, what we have experienced with our patients here, that it really is not the same for each person. Okay, thank you, Alvin. Mr. Wang, microphone, please. Uh, good morning from Chinese newspaper, Guomin Daily. My, sec my question goes to Secretary Nogradis. Uh, there are only 409 new confirmed cases in China. It seems like the situation has already under control. So can I get your comment on the Chinese government's effort to contain the COVID? And it, w when do you think it's time to lift the travel ban against China. Thank you. I will uh, assess it um, on a regular basis and usually our assessments are done um, almost every day. Uh, so when we assess the situation, we take a look at the um, uh, number of cases, um, the decline if, if any or the increase if any. So all of these are taken into consideration um, when we monitor and assess the the, 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 our decisions no, on the matter. So including uh, potential lifting of the travel ban will depend highly on the number of cases or the decline in cases. Uh, but uh, obviously, I share the same sentiment with the entire world. Uh, when, we are, when we note uh, the decline of cases in China, and we're very hopeful that this decline will continue and uh, uh, we also are hopeful that uh, the Chinese government will continue um, to control the situation, and we're confident that uh, you're able to do so. Thank, thank you, Secretary. Okay, last question, Ataya. Arian. Um, to Asik Berhere. Ma'am, um, just to confirm this report, um, meron na po bang uh, Filipino na nag-test positive sa South Korea for COVID-19? Kasi this is quoting you po. No, uh, we do not have any Filipino yet uh, mm -hmm. positive for COVID-19. We have one in Singapore, we have two in UAE, and we have one in Hong Kong. Okay po. And then um, for the DFA naman po, sir, um, with South Korea as um, the largest, uh, the country with the largest number of COVID-19 cases outside of China, yung travel protocol po ba natin ay self-quarantine for 14 days pa rin po? There are no changes po? As far as I'm aware, uh, there is no travel restriction uh, yes, from South Korea. Um, however, uh, I think at the ports of entry, uh, they still do all the thermal scanning for yeah. all passengers, regardless of uh, origin. So, kung merong dumating na tao from even from Europe or from America na may lagnat, lalabas sa thermal scanning, and then merong procedure right at the airport to determine if that person needs to be uh, declared as a PUM, PUI, or whatever other health protocol needs to be followed. So, at this point, wala pa naman hong, uh, travel restrictions mm -hmm. uh, to South Korea. But same procedure po. You, uh, the government is only recommending a 14-day self-quarantine. Yes. 
Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, MPC. Thank you, Assistant Secretary Menyes. Last words, po, sir. Ah, uh, siguro. Uh, well, let me just uh, end by saying that the Philippine government has been handling the COVID-19 threat quite capably. This is seen by the fact that uh, so far only three foreigners have been identified as COVID positive in the Philippines. And in fact, two of them have already recovered and have left. Um, there is also the fact that uh, the Department of Health is very uh, capably handling the clearance, uh, monitoring of the persons under uh, PUMs uh, and also the PUIs uh, within the country. As uh, Secretary Nograles also explained, we have uh, even gone to the extent of uh, preparing our local government units with the creation of the Barangay Health Emergency Response Teams and the fact that the government agencies are closely coordina coordinating and frequently meeting at the highest levels uh, to keep the effects of COVID-19 to a minimum, both here in the Philippines and among our 10 million Filipinos abroad. So I think the operational uh, motto of the, of the DFA in particular is that we hope for the best, but we are preparing for the worst. Assistant Ber, Assistant Asak Berhere. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'd just like to remind all of uh, our Kababayans that we just remain vigilant. We remain calm. Uh, we are not certain of anything right now because of the uh, lack of evidences that uh, would give us the exact nature of this disease. But what would be certain for all of us is that government is working hard to protect all our kababayans, to contain this disease, and hopefully we do, do not get this local transmission. So let us just remain to be vigilant. Please get only information from the official source, the Department of Health hotline, website, and also coming from our other agencies, Department of Foreign Affairs, the ILG. And uh, we just want to, again, uh, reiterate uh, our recommendation that everybody practices our universal precautions uh, so that we don't get sick or we do not transmit uh, disease to other people. And also, let's remain to be healthy so that the disease will not uh, catch up with us. Salamat po. Secretary Nagrales. Um, yes, um, three things. Unang una, um, patuloy pa rin yung ating whole of government approach, no? in handling the situation and the threats of COVID-19. So patuloy pa rin yung aming pakikipag-ugnayan sa iba't ibang mga ahensya at lahat ng mga decisions natin is based on this whole of government ap approach taking a look at all aspects no, of governance. Pangalawa, kailangan talaga natin ng citizen participation. No? We really need and ask for the continued support of our citizenry, ating mga kababayan, whether here or abroad. Kailangan namin yung ating, ating pakikipagtulungan at pakikipag-ugnayan. Hindi magawa ng gobyerno ang lahat ng ito kung wala pong support mula sa ating uh, mga kababayan, mga Filipino citizens. And number three, of course, we'd like to thank media no? because your role here is very crucial. And we will continue to engage you in, uh, when we have any announcements or advisories. Uh, we really need the media to be there. Um, to help spread the word, no? And uh, let's spread the correct news. Uh, and media is very crucial in that. And again, ang panawagan namin is please do not spread fake news. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, Secretary Nograles. Salamat din kay PCAO Assistant Secretary Queenie Rodolfo and kay Director Pebbles Duque. Back to our studio sa Radio Pilipinas and People's Television Network. <music>